why so many female corporeal functions are referred to by the names of men, particularly regarding their reproductive phenomena? Since I knew it couldn't possibly have anything to do with the patriarchal profit-oriented condition of the medical establishment or any virulent strain of misogyny that may have invaded the health professions, I assumed it was just a fluke. Still, <clears throat> it occurred to me that there are perhaps more suitably feminine terms for things that only women experience than the names of the men who discovered them. The pre-labor contractions of the muscles in the pelvic floor called Braxton Hicks, named after the English doctor who first described them in 1872, will hitherto forth be referred to as the Britney Spears. <sighs> While the real hardcore labor contractions will be known as the Patty Smiths. Kegels. The exercise that strengthens the before-mentioned muscles in preparations for the rigors of childbirth developed by Dr. Arnold Kegel in 1948 shall be called bundles. Isn't she? Male physicians have even infiltrated the sanctum sanctorum of the woman's body like explorers planting flags to claim the spot with the infamous G-spot. It was named after the German gynecologist Ernest Grappenberg, who located it in the 1940s. This will be now known as the M spot. Madonna. Then I started thinking about renaming male bodily functions. I think that penile erection, for example, should be called Cummings, while postmortem erection should be referred to as going. It shouldn't be that difficult to gather a consensus for such rational names. I mean, how hard could it be? Now, Cummings may result from any of various physiological stimuli. The cerebral cortex can initiate Cummings even in the absence of direct manual stimulation in response to visual, auditory, olfactory, or imagined stimuli. Which I am now calling the Marilyn Monroe syndrome. The cortex can also suppress Cummings even in, the abs even in the presence of mechanical stimulation, now dubbed the Betty Davis effect. Nipple erections will now be known as partings, and clitoral ones will be called Jolines. Angelina recently gave birth to twins by cesarean, for medical reasons, of course. A good friend of mine, a practicing MD, was singing the praises of this highly overused and costly procedure during our chat about all the things that could go wrong during the delivery of my son. He actually suggested that I have an episiotomy, an incision into the perineum and vagina to allow sufficient clearance for birth, sometimes performed unnecessarily due to the impatience of the physician. He added that I should tell the doctor while sewing me up to do something called the husband's stitch. I said, <clears throat> You've got to be kidding me. He said, no, you don't want to become a slush bucket, do you? This approach will now be known as the sadomasochist stitch, and no cutting at all will be referred to as the rape stitch. My doc friend laid it all out for me step by step, the ever so profitable snowball from Pitocin to the epidural all the way to the cesarean. I asked him, why most C-sections took place at about 4 p.m., causing it to appear as if so many medical procedures had more to do with the doctors than the patients. He changed the subject. Anyway, the last name I would like to introduce to the registry is Millicent. It shall hitherto forth be used in referring to all male ejaculation. The release of some 350 million sperm from the penis, now called the little Millie. And out of those thousands and thousands of sperms, or Tina Turners, only about 200 will reach the egg, and only one Tina Turner will actually penetrate, thus causing conception. Meal, in French, is a thousand. Scent is a hundred. It's the perfect name. Ah, oh, the miracle of life. Thank God for doctors. 
God definitely would not have known what to do without them. Good thing they finally showed up on the scene to help all us women who've been trying to do this without them all these millennium. Have you done your fondos today? <laughs>